This is Joe with Joe's Astrophoto.com. Today we've got five ways to improve your astrophotography. I wanted to talk today about improving your images. When you first get started in astrophotography, there's a lot to learn. The learning curve is really steep. However, as time goes on and you start to understand all the little areas and facets of the hobby, you'll want to start to improve. So most likely you've started with um, a little auto tracker and a DSLR and either a smaller refracting telescope or maybe even just the camera lenses. And that's great and you're getting some great pictures and you're loving the pictures when i first started i just i was amazed at my pictures i was showing everybody they were amazed at the pictures i mean it's a great hobby and it really hooks you in and it grabs you and you want to just continue to improve and so i thought today that i would just go over some of the ways that i improved my astrophotography and i think that it'll work for anybody the very first way to improve your astrophotography, your images, the hobby, everything about it is the mount. You really need a good mount. Uh, it, as far as the upgrade path goes to, you know, what piece of gear should I get next? I've, I've learned all my gear, I've mastered it, I know what I'm doing and, and how to do it. Now I'm ready to start moving uh, up in the hobby. The very first thing that you need to do is look at your mount. Uh, does your mount have enough weight capacity to hold the new gear that you want to buy? Uh, does your mount do guiding well? And does it have PEC, uh, the periodic error correction? And less importantly, but also something to take into consideration, is does it have a permanent PEC? Can you write the PEC curve after you've recorded it to the encoders on the mount? And then finally, and this would be into advanced is what kind of encoders do you have and some of the very high-end mounts uh, have more precise encoders which makes them cost a lot more money and do you need that and i don't think that right now it, at my stage i'm i'm at that level where i need that higher end mount just yet um, probably not for quite some time actually uh, but i don't know where you're at in your astrophotography so those are things to to look at and think about when it's time to start upgrading. Tip number two, and also in the path of upgrading, is you wanna look at your camera. Uh, if you're using a DSLR that's unmodified, maybe you're thinking, well, maybe I'll modify it uh, or get one that's, that's already modified. Um, if you're already using that, maybe you wanna move to a dedicated astrophotography camera. Uh, maybe you're using the one-shot color and you want to try mono and that's a big upgrade in and of itself. Going from a DSLR to a dedicated astrophotography camera is a huge step. Um, mostly because the, the cooling involved. And when you can cool your sensor, um, you get rid of a lot of noise. And in summertime, it's not as important in winter as it is in summer, of course. But also because you could make dark libraries and I know sensors change over some time but you could use those dark libraries for up to six months before changing them uh, before redoing them and the advantage is, is that you can you could set that dark exposure time to exactly the same temperature that you took your lights with and you could do it anytime you want I, I could do it right now. It, as bright as it is out here with the roof off, I could still do it because I don't have any light leaks in here. And I could just set this to start taking as, you know, whatever sub lengths that I need and, and cool the camera. And, and that's important. Um, if you've got a DSLR and you need to take your dark frames or an uncooled camera, I should say, because there's CMOS uncooled cameras, um, you'll need to do it at the same temperature. So as the temperature changes throughout the night, you're never going to get it exact. It, it, it could be close though, but you're going to have to do it after your session's over. And when your session's over at three or four in the morning, you don't, 
you've got another two hours worth of taking darks maybe, depending on how long your exposures were. And, and that makes a difference in your photographs because when, when I was first starting out, I didn't want to just wait two hours there with my rig set up somewhere at a dark side or even on my front driveway. I, I wanted to get home and get some sleep. Um, so I would purposely take shorter exposure times so that I knew that I could still get um, 20 or 30 or 40 darks um, in a decent amount of time so that I could still, you know, get home in time to, uh, to go to sleep. So moving to a dedicated astrophotography camera brings a lot of advantages and I know that it'll improve your astrophotography um, in ways that you're not even thinking about right now. The third tip I have for you today is guiding. Um, you're gonna wanna start guiding as soon as you possibly can um, so that you can have much longer exposure lengths on your subs. Um, the best way to guide is to go use ASCOM and do pulse guiding um, by connecting your camera and your guide camera directly to your computer. Um, I've seen uh, quite a few people on YouTube using the ST4 um, connection on your mount and I mean that's okay I suppose for them. For me it improved my experience by having the ASCOM drivers uh, control everything through pulse guiding because w when you're doing it that way your, your acquisition software knows where your telescope is. So you, there's no more recalibrating after you slew. Um, it knows where the meridian flip's gonna be. And it just is a, it's better um, at your total RMS error. So the total RMS error in your guiding is something that I feel is quite important. I've seen a lot of people talk about um, not to obsess over the graph, your guiding graph, your guiding numbers. You're still gonna get a good image. And you will get a good get image, most likely if they're, you know, if your numbers are, are in a decent area. But if you really want a great image, I mean, if you really want those tight stars, I and mean, we're, we're trying to improve our astrophotography, then you do want to obsess a little bit over it. I mean, you don't want to go crazy, but you need to get it down. Um, the total RMS error is the total error between your declination and your right ascension errors. And you are going to want to get that down, you know, to around 0 0.6, 0 0.5. The lower you get it, the tighter your stars are going to be, the longer you could take sub exposures. So don't just blow it off because a lot of people say don't obsess over it. I mean, try your best to get as good a guiding as you can. My fourth tip for getting better astrophotography images is your polar alignment. Um, again here, I noticed that there's a lot of YouTubers and other people um, who still do this by, by looking through the built-in uh, polar scope on their mount. And that works for them, and I, I man, my hat's off to you guys who do that, because I can't do that. I've tried, I'll sit here for an hour uh, obsessing over where that, you know, where Polaris is, um, sorry, Southern Hemisphere astronomers, I have no idea how to polar align in the Southern Hemisphere. But I'll spend a long time, you know, obsessing over it. And it takes away from a lot of my imaging time and I never feel like I get it just right. And the closer you are on your polar alignment, the easier it's going to be to guide. And the better you're guiding, the better your images are gonna look. So a polar alignment is a huge deal. And I would recommend either sharp cap or getting a pull master. With either of those two, you can get dead on polar alignment. And I really feel that you need that to improve your astrophotography. You're not going to get those long subs that you're really craving to, to get that better image at the end without a really solid polar alignment. My fifth tip for you is getting correct calibration frames getting good calibration frames really will improve your astrophotography photos. Ideally, you wanna take about 32 darks and 32 flats and flat darks. Once you get these down, and especially if you've got a dedicated astrophotography camera, um, you could pretty much use the same 
uh, darks for quite some time, maybe six months or so, and until you start to see that it's not calibrating out and then it's time to take some new ones. But you're really gonna wanna spend some time and get some good quality calibration um, files because that's, that's one of the things I see a lot on uh, social media postings where people are asking, you know, what's wrong with this? What, why do I have this circle over here? Why do I have this and that? I mean, ideally you wanna take your flats and your dark, dark flats either right before or right after every session. You could either use the sky um, to take sky flats or you could use a light panel like I have. Um, I use a light panel because sometimes I find it very difficult to be out here just at the right time, either before or after my imaging session begins or ends to take those sky flats and it's never quite the same. Um, so by using a light panel, I get the same, pretty much the same flats every time. And once you, you get that a good routine down, um, you'll, you know, it's, it's not a problem anymore. The, your darks with a dedicated astro cam, you could just take them anytime you want, like I mentioned earlier. Um, and you could keep that library building up so that you don't have to retake them over and over again. Um, but every time you set up and you tear down, you're going to want to take some flats. And if you've got a permanent mount like mine where the telescope never moves and you're not changing anything in the image train, you could probably get away with taking flats maybe once a month. The image sensor does change and you will notice that over time. And I've noticed it. I've taken flats and I've used the same flats for a month and then another month and then another month and pretty soon stuff's just not looking correct anymore. And plus I can't control what kind of dust and debris gets on um, the telescope lenses over the course of a week. You know, with the roof open all night and the wind blowing, you're gonna get some stuff on the lens. Um, you, you're gonna not want that in your final image. So you're gonna wanna take flats way more often and dark flats. Um, but if you tear down every night, then you're absolutely going to want to take your flats and dark flats every night. If you've got a DSLR, you could use bias frames, um, but it never hurts. It just never hurts just to take your flats and your dark flats. You could use one of the wizards and one of the acquisition software that's built in now. I think the, the main three all have them and just follow the wizard and let it do, let it do its thing. And th that'll be it. So then you don't even have to worry about bias frames at all. Um, it's always better to match your your flats and your dark flats. So that's pretty much the five tips that I had for you. Um, I think I've got a bonus tip here and uh, that is add more time to your photos if you want them to get better. I've seen a ton of what would have been amazing images where the poster says, well, I got four hours on this or two hours on this. Um, I know it's difficult to go out more than one night or two nights in a row um, to get m multiple night projects done. But if you really want a much better, cleaner image and easier to process image, then you really want to get like six hours is my minimum. I, if, I, if I can't get six hours on a target, then I'm not even going to go for that target at all. Um, it, it, it's, I'm wasting my time. When, once I get six hours, that's my bare minimum. That's where I start to see things really um, take shape uh, in my post-processing. At eight to 12 hours, now things are starting to actually pop and you're really starting to get this um, clarity in the image, an image that I feel like, okay, I could post this on social media or I could make a print with this picture. And then I take it a step further and I shoot for 16, 20, 30 hours. And that's really the complete solid image. You know, that's collecting all the little fine dust particles up in that nebula or getting all the little hands and arms inside of that galaxy. And it really does take that long. And that's why I always say, you know, use plate solving. Um, a, a lot of people are still using the hand controller. Um, every modern mount in the last decade uh, and all the acquisition softwares come with plate solving. Use it. Um, that way, after you've used it the first night, 
you can go out the second night and reload that in and plate solve again right back to where you were and the third night and the fourth night. Uh, if you're using the hand controller, that becomes extremely difficult and it's just something that you'll, you'll stop doing and you won't take that much longer um, total integration time on a target. I hope these tips help. They, they were super helpful for me when I was upgrading my astrophotography. And if you found them useful, please smash that like button and we'll see you in the next video.